Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Where to begin? The basic fundamentals of musicianship, how to think about what we're doing musically. We looked at naming notes quite recently, and today I want to look at beat, tempo, pulse, meter, subdivision. These are all sort of important vocabulary words that help us describe, understand, and think about really crucial elements of our musicianship. I'll come back to all those words in a moment. But uh, first of all, there's just this thing that we have to acknowledge, which is that as musicians, we're doing something that exists in time. And our experience of time is essentially a continuous one. Depending on things that are happening to us, time may seem to move quickly or slowly, but it always sort of feels like a ribbon, like a continuous stream of air or um, a road rolling out in front of us and in back of us. I was talking to my grandson Easton recently about this, and he said this. One thing can be the past, and the very next thing can be the future. Really appreciate his insights. However, for music, we take it kind of like in chunks, don't we? There's definitely a kind of music to be made when we think about time as one continuous existence. But because we'd like to communicate with our fellow musicians, it's really nice to be able to quantize things. And so we have pulse. This is a metronome, and it's an ancient machine, a pendulum. We have electronic ones, of course, but the way a pendulum works is like here, it's closer to the axis, swinging faster, further away, up here at the tippy tip top, about the slowest a person can manage, about 40 beats a minute, right? 35, I think Adam Neely once said that was the slowest tempo a person could manage. I tend to agree. It's really hard to play slower than that. There is a tempo giusto, a kind of a perfect beat, which is very much like our heartbeat. Now, we can divide that in a couple of different ways, and I'll show you what I mean. When we do music, this is something that we do all the time. The first thing is really simple. It is subdivision. Here's my basic pulse, and I'll just play this. I'm playing what we call quarter notes, or the basic beat, at 60 beats a minute. Now I'm going to divide that in half with the top. Here we go. Pulse and subdivision. I've created an opportunity for more notes. I divided those basic pulses at the bottom into twice as many by dividing them exactly or as close to exact as I could come in half. And when I was doing that, I was thinking one, 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 one. And up here I was going one and one and one and one and. Notice I'm just using the number one. Subdivision is the capacity to break apart that basic pulse. Now, in music, there's a thing that we call meter. Meter is grouping those basic pulses, and there's any number of ways to do that. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, is a metrical grouping. I've grouped those pulses into easy to apprehend four beat groups. And in your DA, that's what a measure is. So here, it's actually fairly easy to see a group of four notes with a strong vertical line, and then another group of four notes with another strong vertical line. Those quarter notes were grouped in four, and we could group them in kind of any grouping we'd like. Can we divide the beat into other subdivisions? Sure. We just did two. Let's do three. 
One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. In musical terminology, we call that a triplet. I've divided the beat into three equal chunks. Can we do four? We can. Things get fast at a certain point. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. We call them sixteenth notes here in the states. In England, they use other terms of different languages using different words to describe what's essentially subdividing the pulse and the pulse that's grouped in meters into more and more complicated, tiny sections. As we divide the beat, we get more precision. It's harder to play accurately when you subdivide the beat. One of the best practices you can do as an instrumentalist is to try quarter notes, and then that's a scale, and then do it as eighth notes, one and two and three, and maybe sixteenth notes, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, it, I usually do my 16th notes in four octaves so that I wind up with an accent on the top. The capacity as musicians uh, to recognize a pulse, group the pulse, subdivide the pulse is a very powerful one because it has applications for us in all kinds of music. If you haven't had formal music education, sometimes the readouts on your DAW can be a little bit confusing. And one of the most confusing readouts can be the um, time signature readout. Okay, so time signatures are a little wacky. I want you to take a look at the, the time signature display here in Logic Pro. There you see the time signature is 4-4, four, four, and it's selected there. Now, there's two numbers. It's not a fraction. The number on the left refers to how many beats will appear in a measure. That is to say, the grouping of our pulses. The number on the right, another four, says a quarter note equals one beat. And that's pretty normal. Now you can divide it, obviously, in three beats a measure. There the three means three beats are in a measure, and a quarter note gets one beat. There are other important groupings in music, including what we call compound meters, where something like six beats in a measure and an eighth note getting one beat is grouped in important ways. Of course, one way would be a group of two, a group of two, and a group of two, but another important way is like this, six, eight, a group of three, and a group of three. And if you remember, it'll be like the triplet thing that we did. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you want to practice and get better at doing stuff like this, try counting while you play. It's not an easy proposition. I mean, it is one of the things that sort of separates a decent player from just kind of an amateur, is the capacity to hold that pulse, subdivision, and meter in place, we've all had the experience of getting lost in the form of a tune, right? It's normal. So I might uh, say to myself, like if I'm doing a blues riff, I might go something like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and now my right hand and if you're a guitarist, obviously you're not doing two things at once. I want to be able to play on different beats. Let's play on two and four, like this. One and two, and here we go. One and two, and three, and four, and one and two, and three, and four, and. and you can see the chord is dropping in. If you look at the measure here, measure 44, I've got that steady pulse in the left hand, eighth notes, and the chord dropping in on beats two and four. It's a nice solid rock sound. A little more sophisticated idea might be to drop one of the chords in on one of the ands. Let's do the and of two and four. Here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and.
every location has a kind of a quality. Every subdivision of the beat, every position in the meter has energy and intent. Learn to recognize the pulse, the grouping of the pulse, and the subdivision of the pulse, and you'll have a giant leg up on understanding music you like, music that's, you know, kind of like in you that wants to come out, and music that's being made all around you. Well, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe, ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time. How far away is the past? It can be as far away as you can. Like, the past could be like one second ago or when we played Uno.